Good morning. This is Glenn Giles, pastor of Enon Baptist Church. We're going to have a worship service together, but it'll be a little different. Rather than recording down at Enon, we are recording from my living room, and I want to welcome you into my home. I'd like to talk to you about something very personal today, about grieving. I experienced uh, the loss of a son many years ago, and I remembered uh, after that son died, the words of King David. Uh, he said that his son would not come back to him, but he would go to his son. And I, those words of King David stuck with me because they told me how real his faith was, that uh, losing a loved one um, was a, a terrible grieving experience for him, but he found comfort knowing that he uh, would one day be reunited, that uh, he would go to heaven, and, and he believed that his son uh, would be there as well. And so I was reading recently about uh, the death of Ruth Bell Graham, and that was Billy Graham's wife. And uh, she was a remarkable woman. Uh, she was born to missionary parents uh, in China, born in China. <laughs> and she grew up uh, in a Christian home uh, and had very deep faith, and, and the, her faith had deep roots. And uh, she met Billy Graham in college, and they uh, fell in love and, and got married and uh, started a family, and they uh, became uh, partners in ministry. And her calling in life was uh, to support his ministry. Uh, it was like their home was a base camp for mountain climbing. Um, she stayed home and kept things straight uh, and running uh, well at home. And he went out and climbed mountains and, and he would come back tired and exhausted and, and find love and comfort and support and rest uh, at home with his family. And uh, Billy Graham once said that she was the, the greatest spiritual influence uh, in his ministry. Uh, and so he paid high tribute to her, and um, she had a great sense of humor. I remember reading that somebody asked her if uh, it bothered her that Billy Graham was away all the time and seldom home. And she had five kids to raise. And she said, yeah, it, it bothered her. And they asked her, well, did you ever consider divorce? And she said, divorce? No, no. Never considered divorce, but I did consider murder. <laughs> so she had a great sense of humor right up to the very end. As uh, her health declined, uh, she had a prolonged illness, and she lost her sight, she lost her hearing, she lost uh, being able to walk, uh, even being able to sit up or, and move uh, at the very end. She couldn't even move. And uh, she died of pneumonia, but on her deathbed, her family gathered around and they read some scriptures together and they sang and, and uh, they prayed together and uh, she died peacefully at home uh, with pneumonia. About four months later, Billy Graham was sitting out on his front porch at his mountain home, grieving the loss of his wife. And his daughter was sitting there with him and uh, asked him, Daddy, how are you doing? And Billy Graham answered her, Anne, it's getting harder. And grief, even after four months, uh, is hard and can get harder. So I think we need to remember whether we are people of uh, great Christian faith or, or just a little Christian faith. Uh, our Christian faith does not uh, prevent us from having to experience grief. It's a part of life. Whether we are Billy Graham or whether we are uh, the great patriarch Abraham, uh, our faith doesn't exempt us from having to go through grief. It helps us go through it, but it doesn't prevent the grief itself. I like to read from chapter 23 in Genesis. So, I have my Bible right here. I hope you have yours handy. Turn to chapter 23 in Genesis, and we'll look at the story 
of the death of Sarah. Remember that our faith is real and our hope in heaven is real and our faith will help us through whatever we face in life, even the loss of a spouse. Sarah lived 127 years, it says. These were the years of her life. This is the only place in the Old Testament where a woman's age is mentioned. And I think that's quite remarkable. <coughs> that Sarah is the only person whose age is mentioned in the Old Testament. She's a very important lady. And everybody knew her age anyway because from the time that Isaac was born, she went around telling everybody that God had given her a baby at age 90 and they laughed with her. So her, her age was not a secret. It says in verse 2, Sarah died in Kerjath Arba, which is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. These two words are very important. Mourning and weeping. To mourn is to cry loudly. And to weep is to cry softly. And you put those two together and you see the waves. Excuse me. <clears throat> you see the waves of grief come upon us. We get attacked by these dark, strong emotions that take over and stab our heart. And these emotions are triggered by our own new thoughts of how big our loss is. And then we're, that wave of loud crying is followed by soft weeping, which is our exhaustion and our sadness. Everything in life reminds us of how much we've lost when we're grieving. It's hard. Picture the day that Sarah died. Abraham is there in their family home, which is a tent. He's down on his knees crying privately over the loss of his spouse. He has lots of money. He's healthy, strong. He has lots of service to do anything he needs done. But none of that is his comfort. None of that gives him strength. But his genuine faith in God, his trust in God, that he has developed through a long walk with God, that's what helps him get through. He and his son are a family. And as a family, they're grieving together. But each one grieves in their own way. And each one is suffering a different kind of loss. Isaac is, has lost his mother. Abraham has lost his wife, his life partner. Imagine Abraham. He's 137 years old. It's no surprise that Sarah died. She's 127 years old. And so it's not a surprise. But they have spent more than a hundred years together. They were on a, a lifelong journey together, a pilgrimage following God. And what an adventure. She played this supporting role, helping him follow his dreams, helping him pursue his quest of God. And she shared in his faith. She watched him build his altars and worship his God. And she worshiped too. They both left family behind in the land of Ur. They both left their homeland to let God take them wherever he would lead them. God took them to the land of Canaan. and There they established their base camp, their home, from which they ventured out their home near the city of Hebron. Well, the day Sarah died, Abraham didn't have the luxury of grieving at home very long. 
he had one day to make arrangements to bury her body. So he pulled himself up off his knees, he pulled himself together, and he went into town. He did what he had to do. It says in verse 3 and 4, Then Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, I'm a foreigner and a visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place among you that I might bury my dead out of my sight. A foreigner means he's not one of them. A visitor means he doesn't know how long he's going to be there. We as Christians are a foreigner and a visitor. We're not part of this world. We are citizens of heaven. And we're on our way home. While we're here, we have important business to do and represent our king. We're part of his kingdom and we're his ambassadors. We're traveling through this world to a better place. Glory to God. Abraham was saying, I'm not one of you. I'm just a shepherd, a, a nomad, a herdsman uh, looking for sheep. I mean, looking for water and, and grass for my sheep don't have any right to demand land. I'm not a landowner, but I do need a burial place. Out of necessity, Abraham must buy a burial place. But it's also an opportunity for Abraham to express his personal faith in God. God promised him the whole land of Canaan. And he could have went back to the land of Ur, to their homeland. Could have cremated Sarah or embalmed her body, took her bones back. But even in death, the death of his wife, Abraham would keep pursuing God's promises and believing God's promises. So a burial place in the land of Canaan was sought out and purchased. It was Abraham's first possession and the beginning of possessing all of Canaan. It was a burial place for him, and it was not temporary. It was permanent. And so the pro process of purchasing land begins. Verse 5 and 6. The sons of Heth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord, you're a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. None of us will withhold his burial place that you may bury your dead. The locals really held Abraham in high esteem. They thought a lot of him. They'd watched what he had done when he went out and rescued the entire uh, city of, of Sodom when they were attacked and when they were carried off as captives. They were sympathetic and supportive to Abraham now in his time of need. They were offering him a burial place among their own. But that would obligate him to them. And Abraham respectfully refused their offer and the strings that were attached. Verse 7 through 9. Abraham looked or stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, If your wish is that I bury my dead out of my sight, then hear me, and meet with, and, and entreat Ephron, the son of Zohar, for me, that he may give me the land, excuse me, the cave of Mechpelah, which he has, which is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me at full price, as property for a burial place among you. Well, Abraham uh, knows that one of them owns an ideal cave for burying. And Abraham shows respect, so he bows for the people of that land. And he asks the locals to meet with Ephraim. So he'll come and meet with Abraham and sell the land for full price. Abraham is, of course, going through this grief, this loss of his wife. 
not having a good day. It's hard. Even under the worst of circumstances, he manages to keep his dignity and to think clearly. You know, our faith is for all days and all circumstances, for Sunday worship days and for Monday burial days, funeral days. Our faith is for when life is settled and for when life is unsettled, for when we feel blessed and when we're having our worst day. Abraham's faith is tested on this day. Ephraim comes publicly before the leaders of the city and he conducts legal business. He heard that Abraham is willing to pay full price. And he says in verse 11, No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field and the cave that is in it. I give it to you. And the, in the presence of the sons of my people, I give it to you. Bury your dead. But he's not sincere. He's just following a custom to appear to be generous. Abraham gives a reply in verse 12 and 13. Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land, and he spoke to Ephraim in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If you will give it, please hear me. If you will give me it, I will give you money for the field. Take it from me, and I will bury my dead there. Abraham insists on paying for the field. Ephraim gives an answer. He names his price in verse 14 and 15. Ephraim answered Abraham, saying to him, My Lord, listen to me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So bury your dead. 400 shekels of silver. Way more than the full price. He's trying to take advantage of Abraham. Abraham keeps his dignity and he honors the God he serves. Verse 16, he really shows good character. Abraham listened to Ephraim, or to Ephraim, and Abraham weighed out the silver for Ephraim, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, currency of the merchants. Abraham was not resentful or indignant. He didn't cause a scene. He paid the named price, the exorbitant price, without saying another word. But self-control. He didn't haggle over the price. That was what it was expected. The other man started high so he could come down. But Abraham, he didn't know <laughs> that Abraham wasn't like other men. Abraham wanted to be generous in this purchase. His money obviously wasn't what mattered most to Abraham. It didn't seem to matter to him at all. What mattered to Abraham was to get a place to bury his wife and later bury himself and for the future generations to come. That one burial place would tie his family to Canaan land, to the whole land. It wasn't all of Canaan, but it was a start. God was giving him a, 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 like a down payment. He was giving him a piece of the land, and later he would fulfill the whole promised land. It was a reminder of their promise from God. Well, this was a sad day in Abraham's life. There would be many more days of grieving. But that day God provided for all of Abraham's needs. His family was able to buy land and bury Sarah's body. Abraham was able with God's help and strength to pull himself together and manfully conduct his grim business with dignity. His grief was very personal, but the town people showed him their support and sympathy. And they helped him get what he needed. That too was provided by God. I am certain that they learned something about old Abraham. That he was gracious and generous. 
even on the day that his wife died. You know, God had been preparing Abraham for this day for a long time. I remember a woman who put her husband in a nursing home said that was the hardest thing she had ever had to do. And she believed that the hard things in our younger years prepare us for the hardest things in our older years. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. It was true for Abraham. He had given up so much. He'd given up Hagar and Ishmael. He was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. Now he was giving up Sarah, his beloved wife. With more years of walking with God come more trust in God. He is our help. And he is our hope. Please pray with me. Lord, we want to walk with you today. We give you our greatest losses and you give us your best comfort. We hurt when we let go of the people we love. And likewise, we hurt when we let go of any other important piece of our life, like our health or our job, or when we let go of our freedom or our dreams or our ministry or our money. Help us through our grieving to keep serving you on our worst day. When we're hurting, help us to continue to show good character like Christ did, like Abraham did. Strengthen us when we're fearful and discouraged and going through the fire. Encourage us with the hope of our happy home in heaven with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.